Hello lovelies and welcome to the most wonderful day of the year, Grilled Cheese Day. I will have you know that our team looks forward to Grilled Cheese Day all year long and it's no wonder grilled cheese is basically the perfect food. So today we've come up with five new outrageous ways to enjoy grilled cheese and I will just be honest, we may have gotten carried away. We're kicking things off today with what I'm calling my fully loaded grilled cheese and the idea is to take all of the amazing flavors from a traditional fully loaded baked potato and put them in a grilled cheese. Yes, this is going to be delicious. So we're starting with our sour cream and chive combination, but to make this even more decadent and rich and gooey and grilled cheesy, I'm actually going to be mixing these two things with some cream cheese. I'm gonna use a fork to work it through until it's nice and smooth, and then I am going to spread it on my bread. For this recipe, I am using just some crusty French bread that I, of course, have buttered on both sides, and I'm just going to spread my cream cheese, sour cream, and chive mixture onto each side of the bread and set those aside. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to my skillet. I'm going to put one of my pieces of bread into the pan, and once it's down, I'm gonna start stacking in the even more amazing cheese. I've got some finely shredded cheddar going in here. You always have the option to use slice instead, but I have always found that shredded cheese melts a little bit better in a grilled cheese, so I always opt for shredded cheese when I can. Then we are going to start to pile in our bacon and arrange it carefully to try to get a little bit of bacon in each and every bite, and then the real magic happens. We're gonna start to add our potato chips. I know, sometimes I get a little crazy. Once we've got our potato chips stacked into our sandwich, we are going to top it with even more cheddar cheese and then add our second piece of bread. We'll give it a flip, get it golden on both sides, Gonna do a little kitchen dance to work off some calories before we eat. And then it is ready to be enjoyed. Holy smokes, guys. This is salty and crispy and tangy and everything you ever wanted but didn't know you wanted out of a grilled cheese. It's a very true story. For my next trick, I am making my Hawaiian-inspired grilled cheese. Now, in this case, I am using a really beautiful sourdough that, of course, has been buttered on the underside. But if you can find yourself some Hawaiian rolls, I would highly recommend you use that because they have a little bit of sweetness to them that is delicious. I am going to add a nice tangy, sweet barbecue sauce. Then we are gonna layer on a whole lot of gooey mozzarella. We all know that very few things melt as well as mozzarella. Once my mozzarella has been loaded in, I am going to pile in some pineapple slices, very thinly sliced. Then I'm going to add some deli ham and some finely chopped green onion. Cause you know, I'm all about getting my greens on this show, aren't I guys? I'm going to add even more mozzarella. It's important for cheese to be on both the bottom and the top layers because it's really the glue that keeps everything together. And then I will put on my top piece of bread. Once again, I'm going to cook this until it is golden. Give it a flip, let it get golden on the underside, and it is ready to enjoy. Guys, you know this can't be bad. Tangy barbecue sauce, sweet and tart pineapple. I know it may seem a bit excessive, but come on guys, it's grilled cheese day. Hawaiian not? And to be honest, if you thought that last recipe was excessive, you ain't seen nothing yet because it is time for a cheeseburger grilled cheese. And no, this is not just a hamburger between two grilled cheeses, that's cheating. This is a grilled cheese filled with all of the deliciousness of a cheeseburger. Join me on this journey. This all starts with some ground beef. We're gonna get it into a nice hot skillet. We're going to use the side of our spoon to break it up into bits and cook it until it is no longer pink. That means it is time to add some nice finely chopped onion to this. We'll let that cook for about two or three minutes just until it softens up. And then we are going to add some condiments to this. So I've got a whole lot of ketchup and mustard going into the pan, as well as a good splash of Worcestershire. Already, I will tell you, my kitchen smells like cheeseburger. We'll mix this all together and then we're going to set our filling aside while we start to assemble our grilled cheese sandwich. 
Now, instead of traditional bread in this recipe, I'm actually using the bottom of two hamburger buns that I've buttered liberally. I'm going to get my first hamburger bun cut side down into my pan, and then I am going to pile in, and I mean pile, some shredded cheddar cheese. Next, I'm going to load in my cheeseburger filling. Don't worry if it oozes out the side, it's fine, you'll just scrape up the bits afterwards. And then, to help it all stick together, we are going to add even more shredded cheese to help act as the glue for my sandwich because it is time for our toppings. In this case, I am a pickle and tomato girl. We'll top that with even more shredded cheddar cheese and get our bun on top. And as soon as our bottom bun is nice and golden, we will give it a good flip and get it golden on the other side. Guys, that's no joke. I don't know what to say. This is kind of like a grilled cheese meets a cheeseburger meets a sloppy joe. There's a lot to love about this recipe. Nutritious and delicious. Except not the first part. Mostly just delicious. Okay, honestly, we're gonna take a break from the gratuitous recipes for something a little lighter, and I'm saying a little lighter. It's still a grilled cheese. We are making a really beautiful green goddess grilled cheese using some goat cheese as our base. Now, if you're not a goat cheese fan, cream cheese is definitely an option here, but I do love some tangy goat cheese. To my goat cheese, I am going to be adding some shredded sharp white cheddar. Next, let's be honest, for some much needed freshness, we are going to add a whole lot of beautiful herbs to this. So I've got some freshly chopped parsley, some basil, and some chives set it in. I've also got some finely grated garlic. This is going to make for the most incredible garlic and herb flavored goat cheese mixture. Once all that awesomeness is mixed up, we are going to spread it on our amazing pumpernickel bread. I've buttered it on the outside as always and I'm just going to pile this mixture high in the center and get it into my pan. Once my pumpernickel is nice and crisp on the underside, I will give this a flip, get it crisp again, We've got some ooze happening. That is always good news. And there you go, herb and garlic grilled cheese you will not want to be without. We have to take video of it first, but then I'm gonna eat it. And finally, we've got quite the showstopper for you guys. It is a roast beef grilled cheese that I would say is a must taste. Now for this recipe, I'm going to be using some thinly sliced roast beef from the deli, but if you have leftover roast beef, say from like a Sunday dinner, that would be even better. Go ahead and use that instead. But just before we get our grilled cheese in the pan, I'm going to saute some mushrooms because of course roast beef with mushrooms, that is just something we need more of in our life. This starts with some butter melting in my cast iron pan. Once my butter's melted, I'll get my mushrooms in the pan. I'll hit it with some salt and some pepper, a little bit of garlic, and then get these cooked down until they are nice and soft, a little bit golden. We'll get them out of the pan and start working on our grilled cheese. My bread for this sandwich is going to be some rosemary focaccia. It's one of my all-time favorite breads, but of course you could use any crusty French bread here, even some baguette flipped inside out would work. I've obviously got it buttered on both sides, so I am ready to go. Next, we are going to add a little squeeze of steak sauce. This is optional, but definitely really tasty. Then I am going to add my provolone. Provolone is such a good melting cheese, but if you wanted to swap in some white cheddar here or even some mozzarella, those would be fine as well. Next, we'll pile in our beef and our mushrooms, and I'm gonna take this right over the top with some crumbled blue cheese as well. I've got some arugula going in on top of that, some sliced red onion on top of that, and two more slices of provolone before I get that other piece of focaccia on top. To make sure all of that incredible cheese melts before the bread on the bottom burns, you may wanna put a lid on this. That's gonna help trap all the heat and get that cheese nice and melted and delicious. I'm pretty sure at this point this sandwich is like five or six inches tall. I don't even know what to call this. Grilled cheese definitely does not do it justice. Guys, I really hope you give all five of these awesome ideas a try. Keep in mind, they will require stretchy pants and possibly a nap afterwards, but it will definitely all be worth it. If you do give them a try, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo, because of course I find pictures of grilled cheese as irresistible as you probably do. 
Keep in mind, all of the amazing recipes are in the description box below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness, slightly healthier than this, where this came from. Happy Grilled Cheese Day, everybody.